I am very excited to be speaking with Congressman Rick Crawford of Arkansas's 1st Congressional District. Representative Crawford serves on the House Committee on Agriculture, House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, and House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Welcome, Representative Crawford. Thank you for speaking with me. Yeah. So the Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in STEM and computer science. Why should students participate in the App Challenge? Well, it's a great opportunity to showcase what they're learning and it provides a platform for them to, uh, to really, I, I guess, um, test their skills. And sometimes it turns into a, an app that is marketable and people say that's a great idea and next thing you know it's on the app store so not only is it a great op learning opportunity but i mean heck it could be a life changer for those individuals who develop the app now the app challenge is a bipartisan initiative with support from both republicans and democrats why do you think members regardless of their political affiliation should host app challenges within their districts well i think all that we do should be geared toward improving quality of life and, and the app challenge is really an effort to do that through educational outreach and developing skill sets and so on that make individuals better prepared in the workforce. And so there is no political um, affiliation with that effort or shouldn't be. And we have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. What advice do you have for students who are interested in the challenge? Well, I wouldn't be inhibited by uh, a, maybe a lack of experience because this is the whole point of this is to help you to get experience. And so um, even if you're young, first time, uh, you know, effort, it's worth it. And, and just keep on keeping on. And, and uh, as you develop your skills, then you'll, you'll have a greater opportunity to, you know, for success. And in your district, you held STEM tours annually, where you accompanied educators to manufacturing facilities to help them better understand the skills asked of students. Why were holding these tours so important to you? Well, what we were hearing from employers was that they felt like um, their workforce wasn't adequately prepared for the demands of the workplace. Um, and a lot of it had to do with technical skill sets, how they acquire those, what's required in the workplace. And we just thought it would be a great way to sort of collaborate with educators to pair them up with uh, a variety, a cross-section of, of uh, employers across the district that rely heavily on STEM education. And so it's been a great success. And, and except for COVID, um, we haven't missed a beat. You know, COVID did derail us, obviously, because uh, we couldn't get out into those environments. Um, but we're looking forward to the next one. And uh, it's the, the, the uptake from educators has been phenomenal. Great. And along those lines, why is early intervention in STEM and computer science so important? Well, you got to give kids a, a boost. You got to let them know and help identify what their potential career paths are. And, you know, almost everything that we do today is touched or impacted by technology. So, you know, the earlier on you can adopt technology, the better you're going to be prepared. And this is the seventh year that we're hosting the App Challenge in the United States. What do you think the long-term benefits of hosting this App Challenge are? Well, I think there's two things. One is just the basic uh, technology uh, piece of it, learning and developing and so on. But the interaction with uh, members of Congress and getting the opportunity to come to Washington and sort of see how the government works I think there are, there are two really important lanes here with regard to the app challenge. And I, that's what I hope that students and educators can see. And the switch to online learning this past year revealed the significant digital divide across the country. How do you think Congress should address this digital divide? Well, you know, it's, it's particularly prevalent in rural and remote areas. And so my district is very rural. Uh, and so we have areas of the district that don't have uh, connectivity and that puts them behind the eight ball. And it was particularly true when we were relying on online, online platforms for education. And so um, it's not just rural America. There are other areas that are underserved with regard to um, broadband access. And so I think that if anything, the, the COVID pandemic has exposed that, that gap, that weakness, and we need to shore that up with more um, broadband initiatives so we can improve connectivity across the country. And what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? I think going back to broadband, I think one of the things that probably has the most uh, promise in terms of 
uh, reducing the cost to deliver broadband is the uh, space-based Starlink uh, constellation network that I think is going to be a game changer in the United States in terms of helping uh, rural and remote communities in particular access uh, broadband internet at a reasonable price point. And so I'm not trying to make a commercial for, for Elon Musk. He can do that all on his own, but the technology is very promising. And I think that's going to, um, that's going to excite a lot of people in, in rural and remote areas. Well, Congressman, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. And yeah. to our viewers, remember the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live, so you can register and submit your apps between now and November 1st. Thank you. Thank you.